Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing applications of vectors. Vectors represent two things, both size and direction. The size or magnitude can be expressed as a length or speed or mass, and the direction could be in degrees, radians, or bearings. Since you're representing both of those things, the vectors could be something like velocity, displacement, or force. Let's look at an example. Suppose, suppose that an airplane is flying at 180 miles per hour. That's its speed, and it has a bearing of north 20 degrees east, so that's its angle or direction. Let's go ahead and draw a vector that represents this situation. So we have our vector coming 20 degrees off the north line, heading toward the east, and with a length of 180 or our speed of 180. Recall that when you're looking at the trigonomic form of any coordinates on the coordinate plane, the x-coordinate is going to be r, or the, right, uh, the length of the radius, or in this case the magnitude of the vector, times the cosine of the angle, and the magnitude of the vector, which is r again, times the sine of the angle. But remember that when we're doing this in terms of theta, we're not using the angle coming off the north-south line. We're using the angle coming off of the positive x-axis going in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so we're replacing r with the magnitude of the vector, and we're going to have to use the angle coming off the positive x-axis. So that's going to give us 70 for our angle, 180 for our magnitude. Now we can estimate that on our calculators and we get about 61.56 and 169.14 for our vector using the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, the endpoint of the vector. And we can rewrite that in our linear, linear combination form as 61.56i plus 169.14j. Here's another example. Suppose that we had a force of 60 pounds that's applied to an object at an angle of south 30 degrees west. Let's go ahead and draw our diagram. This time, because we're going in the southwest direction, our vector is going to be in the third quadrant. And again, we have an angle of 30 coming off the vertical line. But we have to change our angle so that it's coming off the positive x-axis, going around until it meets with our vector. So in this case, our angle is going to be 240 degrees, and our magnitude is the weight, or 60 pounds. And then we want to give our vector in component form as negative 30 comma negative 51.96, just by plugging in 60 cosine 240 in your calculator and 60 sine 240 in your calculator for the y-coordinate. And then again, you can rewrite that in your linear combination form. Okay, let's suppose that we had two forces, one with a magnitude of 30 and the other one with a magnitude of 25, acting on the same object. We want to find the resultant vector of these two vectors. In other words, we want to find the sum of the two vectors that we have involved here. So we have a 30-pound force with a direction of north, 20 degrees east, and a 25-pound force with a direction of south, 55 degrees east. So the first thing that we have to do in order to add the two vectors together is to first write them in their component form. So for the first vector we have 30 pounds and our angle is 70 again coming off the positive x-axis. And for our second force our angle is negative 35 and our weight is 25. Again, we're getting the negative 35 because we're measuring off the positive x-axis down to the vector. So we have a negative angle of 35 degrees. Now what we want to do is add those two vectors together. So remember when you're adding vectors together, you're adding your x-coordinates together and you're adding your y-coordinates together. So we ended up with approximately 30.74 and 13.85 as our resultant vector, or the sum of vectors f1 and f2. Now that we've found the sum of the two vectors, let's find the direction and magnitude of the resultant vector. So, if you're looking at finding the angle, you're just going to divide y over x, 
because it um, set that equal to the tan of theta. Remember the tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So we get an angle measure around 24.25 degrees. We're going to go ahead and change our angle to a bearing because our information was given as a bearing, so we should give our answers as bearing. So that's going to be northeast at 65.75 degrees. Then we want to find the magnitude of the sum of the vectors. So we're going to um, use our distance formula and square our x term, add it to the square of our y term, and take the square root. So we get around 33.7 pounds. Now, drawing that on our coordinate plane with our original two vectors seems to make sense. Remember that when you are adding the two vectors, it's the same as putting them endpoint to endpoint. So if you take vector f2 and move it so its starting point is at the end of vector f1, it should meet up with our resultant vector at the endpoint of f1, f2. So this seems to make sense for us. Okay, thank you for tuning in. Um, the next lesson will be on um, projections.